Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Now, a lot of you ask, how can malware get around multi-factor authentication? If you've got something set up where you're gonna get an SMS on your phone, how can malware evade that? Well, the malware just has to be on your phone. Today, we're gonna take a look at SharkBot, a Trojan banker that affects Android devices, and funnily enough, it comes disguised as an antivirus program. And a lot of these actually are available on the Play Store. Obviously, it's been taken down now, but it could just reappear as a different app. So it's very easy if you're on the Android side of things to get infected by these banker Trojans, and they're very dangerous. And in this video, we're going to demonstrate why. This video is brought to you by privacy and security app, Malloc Anti-Stalker. So before we talk more about this threat, I just want to show you what it does. Now with the beauty of Windows 11, we have the ability to run Android malware on Windows. Isn't that amazing? So we're going to take full advantage of that. Now I have everything set up on this system to do so. So we're just going to run this SharkBot sample. Now keep in mind when this was um, first released, I think it only had three or four detections on Varstol, so it's not very well known. If we go ahead and run it, it's going to ask for permissions, of course. So once false in media, camera, device sensors, I'm just surprised it doesn't ask for microphone. But if we go ahead and click install, it's gonna get an antivirus program installed over here. We've got an Android antivirus on Windows, amazing. And if we open the app, Opens up, looks like a, kind of an antivirus program, but I suppose at this point it's hooked into the system. It's got the keylogger active. It doesn't really care what it shows you, but it does pretend to show you your memory usage. If you click on toolbox, it has game booster and app uninstall. Doesn't seem to have any functionality. So not a lot of effort put into the masquerade, not trying to fool the user for too long. I suspect once you have it installed, it doesn't even matter if you try to uninstall it. You can even see some misspellings here, like do not disturb. <laughs> I guess maybe if you're a non-English malware creator, you just dis English. If we go ahead and close it, I think it continues running in the background. If we open notifications, you can see that. Of course, the app is now installed on the system, so we can open it directly from here. But what's it doing in the background and how can it bypass multi-factor authentication? But first, let's discuss how it spreads itself using the SMS auto reply feature. You know how your phones have an auto reply feature so you can respond to certain generic messages. This is going to intercept that and send out a link to download this app to everyone in your contacts. It is also going to abuse the accessibility services. And in order to bypass the multi-factor authentication, it's just simply going to intercept your SMS. And the malware authors put it to good use to steal your bank credentials. They will actually use your bank app to send money to themselves. So it's not like ransomware where they do something to your device and then it's up to you to send them the money. Here, it's just they just directly transfer money to their bank account using your app. And you might not even know what's happening because they might just disable the notifications for their SMSs. They could just delete the SMSs after they happen. Once you have key logging capabilities, it's very easy on a device to bypass any kind of authentication system you have. Now, funnily enough, a lot of multi-factor authentication these days just relies on your phone being secure. So if you're logging in from a computer, the second factor is your phone. But if you're logging in on your phone, where's the second factor? Because you're just going to get another interaction on the same device and the transaction will be authenticated. So having your phone compromised by key logging app or anything that can track your SMSs and read those messages where the codes are being sent, well, that just compromises the entire multi-factor system. So if you look at the technical analysis, you can see we've got some example apps here. We've got LiveNet TV media player. So, so it's not necessarily the same fake antivirus app that everyone's going to see. It depends on the date and time, which app has uh, managed to make it onto the Google Play Store. And of course, they will be using SEO to get common terms that people search for. So maybe a lot of people search for a media player. So when you do it, they might have an ad or something that just puts them at the top of search results. And you might just instinctively click on it and install it and not realize what happened. 
Now, interestingly, a specific thing about this SharkBot is that it immediately tries to enable accessibility services, and that's going to keep requesting that until you accept. At the time of release, it had a low detection, only 3 out of 62 engines. Keep in mind this was late 2021, uh, so some time has passed. It's better known now, but it's no less dangerous, I suppose. It's still not that well known, though, which is a bit alarming and even has a lot of sophisticated evasion techniques. All communication with the C2 are encrypted, so it's not something you would notice just by analyzing the network traffic. And once installed, SharkBot is even going to hide the icon from the device screen, so you're not even gonna realize that you have this thing installed anymore. And the initial payload, the app that you download, is not gonna be the malicious part. The app is just gonna be a downloader. Once it's running on your system, it is then going to download the external ATS module from the C2 or the command and control server. And this is what's going to do most of the malicious work. Now, as with any keylogger, it can use a very traditional overlay attack. So it's just going to create a fake login screen on your phone and ask you for your username and password. And if you type it in there, well, <laughs> you just sent your credentials to the attackers and then they're going to use it to try to log into your bank. And when the multi-factor authentication system sends an SMS, the app on your phone is going to read that and boom, they're in. Now, finally, to the most important part, the automatic transfer system module. So this malware is going to be able to autofill a legitimate mobile banking app and create a money transfer from your account to theirs and also bypass any 2FA mechanism be it SMS-based, push notifications-based, basically anything that has to do with your phone unless a secondary device is involved that's not infected, of course. And because it's acting as a user on the phone, it's very difficult for the bank to be able to detect this kind of stuff. So this is a particularly dangerous malware. And I wanted to make a general advisory for it for all of you who are using Android. Now, of course, if you're on the iPhone side of things, it's a bit safer because of the way the iOS ecosystem works. Android malware is definitely a thing and it's becoming more and more prevalent. And most of them only rely on one or two mistakes by the user. So in this case, the only mistake you need to make is click on the install button, give it access to all of this stuff. And once you do, there's no going back, it's just gonna disappear. It can hide the install on the home screen, so you might just think the install didn't work, and then the malware authors are in your phone. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and share it if you did, and let me know if you'd like to see more content on Android, mobile malware, stuff like that. We have a lot of super interesting videos coming up, so make sure you subscribe. And now to our sponsors. This video is brought to you by AntiStalker, a brand new Android security app that can help you monitor and control access to your camera and microphone. You can also see data that's being sent back and forth, the telemetry that's being collected. As you all know, it's a trend for modern companies to collect as much data from your phone as they can for advertising purposes. With AntiStalker, you can view that, you can block it. You can also mute your microphone when you're not on call to make sure nothing confidential is getting collected and stored. They also have an anti-theft feature, a permissions manager and whitelist, so it's easy to manage your apps. They also don't store any of your data for analysis, so it is truly a privacy-centric app. They have a free version, so you can go ahead and download and check it out right now using the link in the description. Show them some love for supporting the PC Security channel. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.